When we picture the world of corporate corruption, we always imagine men in impeccably well-tailored suits who work for a huge, faceless oil or drug company or something along those lines. We never think of the various companies that make up the dairy industry as being shady. They work with cows and they make ice cream. I mean, how could they possibly be evil? Well, we're about to show you. Number 10. They lobbied to give dairy a bigger section of the food pyramid. Prior to it being replaced by the healthy plate scheme championed by Michelle Obama, the food pyramid was the go-to way that schools, parents, and health-conscious members of the public decided how to portion their meals. What few people realized is that just before the food pyramid was set to be released to the American public in 1991, the dairy industry found out about it and didn't like that the dairy section was towards the top of the pyramid, indicating that only one portion should be consumed every every day. So, industry bigwigs spent the better part of a year complaining to the Department of Agriculture, presumably in a really annoying nasally voice. Now, as you're going to find out through the course of this video, the dairy industry has an unreasonable amount of power which can affect and influence government decisions. With that in mind, you can probably imagine what happened when the Department of Agriculture released an updated food pyramid a year later. Now, if you guessed that the food pyramid had a bigger section for dairy that suggested two to three portions a day, you'd be absolutely correct. In just under a year, the dairy industry managed to convince the government to tell every single person in America to triple their intake of dairy dairy just by complaining really hard, which, come to think of it, it's actually kind of inspiring. Number 9. They fought to make margarine pink Margarine is an innocent, ubiquitous product that you can buy in any store, but when the product was first introduced to the United States back in the 19th century, butter manufacturers positively blew their churns. In fact, they were so fearful of the potential dent this new product could make in their profits, they complained directly to the government. Butter barons across America argued that the margarine industry should be banned from dyeing their product yellow. They reasoned that by dyeing their product yellow instead of leaving it the unpalatable shade of off-white it usually was, margarine producers were unfairly trying to pass off their product as butter. We feel we should point out here that these butter makers were dyeing their own product yellow to make it more appealing as well. Amazingly, the butter industry was not only able to convince the government that dyeing margarine yellow shouldn't be allowed, they also managed to convince them to enact a law stating that all margarine instead had to be dyed a garish shade of pink. This meant that for a brief but nonetheless significant period in American history, all margarine was bright pink just because the butter industry said so. Number 8. They bribed Nixon to raise milk prices. Depending on how old you are, Richard Nixon will make you think of either the Watergate scandal or of Futurama. Now, we love the latter, but we're here to talk about something related to the former. During Nixon's time in office, the dairy industry began to worry about their bottom line when poor sales and a boon in production resulted in a huge surplus of milk. A surplus of the white stuff meant that the government had no real reason or incentive to raise the wholesale price of milk that year, and in fact had every reason to lower the price for the consumer in order to stimulate sales. This was a thought that was enough to terrify the members of the dairy industry who apparently didn't yet have a second gold toilet seat. So, in 1971, representatives from Associated Milk Producers met with President Nixon and offered him a multi-million dollar donation for his next election campaign. You know, of course, they were just being nice. A few days later, though, out of nowhere, President Nixon ignored direct advice from the Department of Agriculture and signed a bill to provide the dairy industry with the equivalent of half a billion dollars in price support. And instead of lowering the price of milk, he actually increased it. Yes, of course, this was all found out to later be super illegal, but somehow no one ended up being prosecuted for bribing the president. Number 7. They fixed the price of milk because why not? So remember when we talked about that milk surplus back in the 1970s, you know, about 40 seconds ago? This is actually something that happens quite a lot in the dairy industry because our eating habits are anything but predictable. In 2013, the Dairy Farmers of America, the DFA, found themselves with a huge surplus of milk and cheese and nowhere to put it. Rather than admitting they'd overestimated severely how much cheese America wanted, the DFA instead decided to simply create an artificial demand for dairy. 
Dairy. The group bought and sold cheese futures, limiting the supply and thus increasing the price that it could be sold for. Yes, this was also illegal, and in a satisfying twist, the DFA were actually found guilty of manipulative trading and were issued with a $43 million fine. Despite begrudgingly paying the fine, the DFA steadfastly refused to admit that they'd done anything wrong. It's kind of like how they refused to admit any wrongdoing when they were accused of price fixing raw milk back in 2009. It's almost like these companies don't care about breaking the law because they've got such strong ties to the government. Or something. Number 6. More cheese on pizzas. If you're a fan of Domino's Pizza, you might have noticed that sometime between 2009 and 2010, their pizzas suddenly stopped tasting like cardboard. This is because Domino's improved the recipe on a lot of their pizzas. And if you're wondering why I'm saying improved like that, it's because the only thing Domino's actually did was put 40% more cheese on them. Now, if Domino's had decided to effectively double the calories on their pizzas of their own accord, we wouldn't really care. But their decision wasn't influenced by consumer demand, it was influenced almost entirely by a group called Dairy Management. This is a splinter group of the Department of Agriculture who agreed to pay Domino's advertising costs if they mothered their pizzas in cheese. While this move did increase Domino's sales, it was also widely condemned by health groups who argued that maybe, just maybe, a single slice of pizza didn't need to contain 66% of a person's recommended daily allowance of saturated fat. They also argued that it was probably a tiny bit unethical for a group working for the government to promote anything that involved imbibing cheese by the pounds, but those concerns were dismissed as lame and apparently super lame in equal measure. What really got people's proverbial goat was the hypocrisy of the Department of Agriculture simultaneously campaigning about obesity, while a group that worked for them spent millions of pounds promoting stuffed crust pizza, which you might recognize as one of those things people eat when they think their heart isn't working hard enough to not explode. But hey, at least Domino's ended up buying a ton of extra cheese. Number 5. Lying About Health Benefits we spend a lot of time so far talking about how unhealthy certain dairy products are, but if we're being honest with ourselves, it's not really fair. Yes, dairy products like milk and cheese are full of fat, but they're also a good source of protein and calcium. What we're trying to say is that the adage, everything in moderation, is very apt when it comes to consuming dairy. Despite the fact that milk has a multitude of health benefits one could tout, a company called Dean Foods still felt the need to lie through their teeth about how healthy their milk was. It reached a point where a professor by the name of Penny Chris had to ask them to remove mention of her study from cartons of their organic milk. The company claimed, amongst other things, that adding docosahexaenoic acid, a kind of omega-3 derived from the oil of fish, to their organic milk supported brain health. The claim was immediately refuted by the aforementioned scientist who conducted the study that they cited. She said, it's not right, it's inaccurate. It's really a marketing strategy to sell more of their milk. Number 4. Hiring Illegal Immigrants to Ruin Rivals Milk is weird. It's one of the most commonly consumed items in an average home, and yet most people couldn't care less about where it comes from. If you were one of several thousand people who got your milk from Bad Axe Dairy between 2000 and 2007, it's almost guaranteed that illegal labor played a part in bringing that carton of milk to your breakfast table. According to news reports, for seven years, 75% of Bad Axe Dairy's workforce consisted of illegal immigrants. This allowed them to unfairly undercut rivals by paying their workers below the legal minimum wage. This went well for Bad Axe, right? Right up until they were caught and slammed with a $3 million fine, which, to be honest, they also deserved for having such a terrible name. Number 3. The Milk Racket Back in the 1930s, a huge scandal rocked America when it was revealed that a group of milk salesmen, wholesalers, and deliverymen in several cities had colluded with one another to covertly fix the price of milk. Local gangsters intimidated, beat up, and in one case bombed anyone who refused to comply with their wishes. This led to an almost universal agreement among people who didn't want to be stabbed in the face to charge the exact same amount for a quart of milk. The milk racket operated unimpeded for almost a decade until a coordinated effort by the police managed to take it down. After the milk racket was dissolved, it was revealed that people were actually killed by milk racketeers in an attempt to control the lucrative milk market. Number 2. Scaring People Into Drinking Milk The Got Milk campaign is widely regarded as one of the most successful advertising campaigns in history. In the United States, the phrase Got Milk is recognized by almost 100% of people, a feat only mega brands like Coca-Cola and Pepsi can claim to equal. The campaign worked better than anyone could have hoped, and it's resulted in practically every person in the United States being aware of the various health benefits of 
milk. And that makes the fact that some of the commercials have had to resort to scare tactics to make people drink more milk even more curious. For example, back in 2003, one ad consisted of a montage of x-rays of broken bones and another showing a calcium-deficient man's arms being ripped right out of their sockets. Both ads were meant to show the benefits of drinking milk in regards to bone strength, and both came under fire for being out of step with the usual light-hearted nature of other Got Milk ads. In response to the latter ad, California Governor Gray Davis asked his staff if it could be pulled off the air because he didn't like the idea of an ad that tried to get kids to drink milk by threatening that their arms might fall off. Shortly after that, there was a recall election that removed Davis from office. Coincidence? Well, almost certainly. Although, it does seem that the dairy industry will do an awful lot to accomplish their goals. Number 1. The organic industry is so corrupt that actual organic companies hate it. Now, this entry isn't entirely about the dairy industry, but they've played a crucial role in what we're talking about here. For example, Dean Foods, that company that was previously lying about the health benefits of their milk, have held nearly continuous influence on the National Organic Standards Board since its inception. If you're curious about what exactly the National Organic Standards Board does, they're the guys in charge of deciding what non-organic substances you can put in organic food and still label it as organic. One item that caused considerable arguments in the organic community was the decision to add DHA to the list of acceptable things you can cram into organic food. And this, by the way, is the exact thing that Dean Foods were putting into their organic milk to claim that it improved brain power. The National Organic Standards Board has so many ties to big businesses that actual organic companies that aren't owned by massive multinational corporations do not want anything to do with it. For example, Michael J. Potter, the CEO of Eden Foods, one of the largest independent organic food wholesalers in the United States, refuses to put the certified organic label on any of the products that his company sells. And that's the image that we want to leave you with today. The CEO of the biggest independent organic company in America being certified so disillusioned with the organic industry that he can't bring himself to label his own products as organic. And that, folks, is Big Dairy. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, do give us a like below. And don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. So hit that subscribe button to get all of those. And as always, thank you for watching.